So I recently assembled this board for an upcoming project and one of the things I had to figure out was how to upload a bootloader onto the SAM D21 chip which is the brain on this board. There's also a NRF24 and the MPU6050 chip on the board but that's for a future video. For now, I just want to show you how I got the Arduino bootloader onto this board using OpenOCD and a Raspberry Pi as a programmer. OpenOCD is an open source software that allows you to program and debug ARM chips using the serial wire debug interface. It's quite a powerful software and it supports a bunch of other chips. I'll link to the website in the video description. So a quick walkthrough of my setup here. I have a Raspberry Pi model 3B plus in this 3D printed case. And I have also broken out all the necessary pins that will be used to talk to the SAMD21 chip via SWD. By the way, I got most of this information from the tutorial written by Adafruit a few years back. I'll link to the page in the description. It was very informative and it helped me in figuring all this out. I have this cable that terminates on this makeshift BOGO pins. So I can just hold it onto the SWD header on the board when I'm ready to program it. All the pins are connected according to the instructions provided on the Adafruit page. Here's the schematic of my connections. You notice I left the reset pin unconnected. You may or may not have to connect the reset pin depending on your OpenOCD settings and the chip you intend to program. Leaving it unconnected worked best for me, so I suggest you do the same if you are programming a SAMD21 chip. Seeing as my board is a custom design, your setup will most likely be different. But as long as you connect the pins accordingly, you should be fine. So the first step is to get the X file for the bootloader that you intend to bond to the chip. For me, that's the Arduino bootloader for the Arduino Zero boards which also uses the SAMD21 chip. First, you're going to want to download the Arduino core for the SAMD21 chip from the GitHub repository. After extracting the downloaded zip, you can locate the folder for the Arduino Zero. This folder should contain a make file that will be used to build the bootloader. So just copy the path to this folder and then cd into it from the command prompt. Once you're in, just run make. If you don't already have make installed on your computer, I'll link to the page where you can download the make binary. You'll also find setup instructions there. After running make, two files will be generated in the same folder that contains the make file. The process generates a .bin file and a .x file. We'll be using the .x file, so you can just rename it to something simple like SAMD21. Once you have the .x file for the bootloader, the next step is to set up OpenOCD on the Raspberry Pi. For that, I'm going to use PuTTY to SSH into my Raspberry Pi from my laptop. You can also do this directly on the Pi with the keyboard and the monitor connected. Just to make sure the Raspberry Pi is powered and connected to the internet. Once you're logged into the Raspberry Pi, you can start entering the commands one by one. So the first command I'm going to run is sudo apt get update that will just make sure everything is up to date on the raspberry pi and it looks like it is after that you can enter the next command which will install the tools necessary to compile OpenOCD. Once that's done, 
The next command will clone OpenOCD into a folder called OpenOCD code. The process shouldn't take too long. Once the OpenOCD download is complete, you need to CD into the OpenOCD code folder. Once you're in, you run the bootstrap script using this command. That will take a few minutes. Once that's done, you need to configure OpenOCD to use the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. So you do that with this command. Once that's done, you can then run the make command. The process should take about 20 minutes, just wait for it to complete. After that, you can then run sudo make install and that should install OpenOCD on your Raspberry Pi. Once that's done, you can cd out of the OpenOCD code folder back to the root folder where you need to create a folder that will hold the configuration file for OpenOCD and also the .x file for the bootloader. In my case, the folder is named bootloader. After creating the folder, you can then cd into the folder. Once you're in, you need to create the configuration file for OpenOCD with nano openocd.cfg. I already have the code for the config file in the text file, so I'm just going to copy it over. These lines of code are really important, so I suggest you go through the line one by one and modify it according to your Raspberry Pi. For example, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3, so my speed coefficient is set accordingly. If you are using other Raspberry Pi models, you need to set the speed coefficient for your specific Raspberry Pi. You can then save the file. So now if I run the command sudo openocd, it will display the following information. If you're not getting the same result, I'll suggest you check the config file again and make sure everything is set properly. From this information, you can see that the chip is not detected yet. And that's because I've not connected the SWD pins. So once I press the connectors onto the board like so, and run sudo open OCD again, it shows a lot more information. You can see the ID of the SAMD21 chip detected here. If you're getting the same result, this means open OCD has successfully detected the chip and is able to connect to it. The next step now is to actually program the X file onto the chip. So for that, you need to first copy the X file from your computer onto the Raspberry Pi. The file should be in the same folder as the OpenOCD config file. Since I'm using PuTTY to connect to the Raspberry Pi, I can just open the command prompt, cd into the folder where PuTTY is installed, and then run the pscp command. This will copy the X file from my computer to the bootloader folder on the Raspberry Pi.
once the X file has been successfully copied over, if I do ls from the bootloader folder, you can see we have both the openocd config file and the bootloader.x file. You need to modify the openocd config file. For that, run nano openocd.cfg again, and that should open up the config file. You need to add a few more lines for actually programming the chip with the specified X file. Here, you need to make sure the file name matches the bootloader file you intend to program onto the chip, and then save the config file. At this point, you are ready to program the bootloader, so you need to make sure the Raspberry Pi is properly connected to your board. You can then run sudo openocd one more time. And this time around, OpenOCD will go ahead and program the chip with the specified X file and it should also verify the programming. Here it says programming started and then programming finished, then verify started and then verify OK. So once you have that, you should have successfully programmed the bootloader onto the SAMD21 chip. The final step would be to connect the board to the computer to check if it's detected by the Arduino IDE. If your board has a USB port, you can just connect it directly to the PC via a USB cable. In my case, there is no USB port on the board, but I do have the USB data lines broken out, so I'll just use a custom cable to connect it. One thing to keep in mind is the SAMD21 chip is a 3.3 volt device. So it should not be powered directly from a USB port which supplies 5V. If you are following this tutorial on a SAMD21 board that has a USB port on board, you probably don't have to worry about this since the board will most likely have a 5 to 3.3V step down circuit on it. I don't have that on my board, which is why I'm also powering it from another Arduino board. So after connecting the board to the computer, it looks like the board has been detected. You can see it's connected to COM port 9 and after uploading the blink sketch, you can see the LED on the board blinking. So there you have it guys, that's how I got the Arduino bootloader onto this board. If you're trying to do the same, I hope this video helps. I'll link to a PDF instruction in the description. I got this board made from GLC PCB and it turned out wonderfully. But most importantly, it works exactly as it should. If you have a PCB project of your own, I honestly recommend you try out GLC PCB. It provides truly amazing services. If you would like to see what this board actually does in a future video, or if you just want to see more videos like this, Consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next video, bye.